This is breaking news from Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And breaking news in Manhattan, a fire claiming the lives of six people, including four children. Yeah, this fire happened overnight at a public housing building in Harlem. A live look from Newscopter 7, firefighters calling this an accident. We have two reports from the scene. Let's get an update from Eyewitness News reporter Candace McCallum. Candace? Well, Ken Charlene, we're starting to hear stories about that family of six that lived in this fifth floor apartment that you can see where the fire just ripped through this morning. One uh, resident here telling me that one of the children gave her flowers just the other day ahead of Mother's Day. But we have Citizen App video showing what fire crews found when they got to 2441 Adam Clayton Boulevard. That was around 145 this morning. People inside were sleeping, saying that they were alerted that something was wrong by alarms and knocks from neighbors on their doors. Heavy flames coming from that fifth floor apartment, one apartment where that family of six lived and could not make it out. The many who live in this nitro run building saying that they had to run down the smoky stairs. One family saying that they had to escape getting down the fire escape with the help of fire crews. I heard like a loud boom. That's what woke me up. And then I opened the door and I heard a lady screaming, fire, fire, fire. We came down the back fire escape. But she couldn't go down the ladder, so I had to tell the fire department to go. She was in the back and they broke a window and they brung out through the front. Yeah, and just moments ago, we saw this group of uh, people who lived in this building. They were gathered around in a circle. They were praying for their neighbors who lost their lives here this morning. You have the Red Cross here assisting the dozens of people who are outside of this building while the crews finish their work up inside here. Now, Diana Rocco is also here live on scene this morning with more from officials. Diana? Yeah, Candace, this has just been devastating. We have learned this morning that it is a mother and her four young children, ages three, six, eight, and 11, that died here this morning, along with another family member who lived here. Investigators are on the scene. The fire marshal has just arrived, and you can see them going through that apartment where the fire started. This morning, fire officials are looking at a burner that may have been left on on the stove overnight in the kitchen as a cause to all of this. The family members were all found in the back bedrooms. There are two bedrooms in this fifth floor corner unit. The 911 call came in at about 1.40 this morning. It took the fire department three minutes to arrive on scene. This is a NYCHA building. Citizens have video showing smoke coming from the unit. The 911 call came in from a neighbor who lived on the sixth floor across the street. He saw fire shooting out of all of the windows of the apartment. It took 100 firefighters about an hour to bring the flames under control. The fire commissioner says when they got to the 45-year-old woman, the 33-year-old man, and the four children inside, it was too late. Units were met at the door of that apartment with fire. Um, the entire apartment was involved. They aggressively moved in, extinguishing the fire as they did when they reached the two rear bedrooms. Um, we found six occupants of that apartment deceased. So tragically, six people lost their lives here this morning. The youngest, just three years old, all members of the same family. Three other people did suffer minor injuries. The fire started in the kitchen of this fifth floor unit. Fire investigators say while all of this is under investigation right now, it does look accidental. We're live in Harlem. I'm Diana Rocco, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. John Del Giorno live in Newscopter 7 overhead. John? And Ken, from the air, you can see here how intense that fire was as the damage is concentrated really in that fifth floor apartment and the apartments above it, the rest of the building virtually unscathed. What we've been watching here from Newscopter 7, you can see investigators now in that corner apartment on the fifth floor. The investigation continues. You heard Diana say that they're investigating the possibility that a burner in the kitchen was related to the cause of the blaze. Meanwhile, traveling through the area, Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, that will remain, will remain shut down for most of the morning while this investigation is underway. We're live over Harlem. John Del Giorno, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. All right, John, thank you. We will continue to update this breaking news story throughout the morning on air and at ABC 7 and Wyatt.
Let's get a check of your weather and traffic, beginning with meteorologist Jeff Smith and the AccuWeather forecast. Yeah, we're waking up to some cloud cover out there right now, but eventually we will see the sun return and temperatures will get nice getting into the upper 60s by later on today. 56 right now in the city. We still do have a couple of uh, sprinkles and showers out there. One batch exiting the Jersey Shore. There's another little batch of sprinkles right along I-84 moving from Orange County into parts of Putnam County, extreme northern Westchester. This stuff, which included some downpours down the shore, now moving offshore, you see, moving over LBI right now and shifting to the east. 59 now at Belmar, 56 in the park, 50 at Newburgh, down to 46 at Monticello. I think today after some early clouds, it gives way to at least some sunshine during the afternoon. Highs recovering back into the upper 60s. You're never more than seven minutes away from weather and traffic. Here's Heather O'Rourke with a look at the commute. And let's head to Suffolk County, LIE, westbound side, right near exit 62. We have an accident. It's off on the shoulder, but everybody's slowing down to take a peek there. Some police activity. And then we'll go over onto the Belt Parkway West right near Springfield Boulevard. That is an accident being cleared. Going on to 59, westbound and Nanuet, right near Fort and drive. There's a lumber spill, so use some caution as you head through that spot. And the New Jersey Turnpike South Exit 12 overturned vehicle in the truck lane. Street cleaning rules are in effect. Shirlene, over to you. Heather, thank you. 635 right now announcing the very latest developments in the deadly shooting inside a Colorado school. Police have identified one of the students accused of opening fire on his classmates. 18-year-old Devin Erickson was taken into custody at the scene along with another student police have yet to name. The gunfire broke out yesterday afternoon inside a public charter school south of Denver. Students were sent running for their lives as parents rushed to the school searching for their children among the chaos. All of this happening not far from Columbine High School. After everything that happened with Columbine and all the suffering that's happened, I know this is happening to us. You never think that this would be the reality. One person was killed and eight others hurt. The school is closed for the rest of the week, and there will be an increased police presence at other schools in the district. 636 is our time. New York City rent regulated tenants voicing their anger as the Rent Guidelines Board voted once again to raise rents. <laughs> During a preliminary vote last night at Cooper Union, board members approved tentative increases of up to 2.5% on a one-year lease, up to 3.75% on two-year leases on rent-stabilized apartments and lofts. And I see families already, families that they are living three or four families in an apartment because they can't afford this rent. And it's horrors. It's horror. They don't understand what we're going through because they don't live in apartments, in renting apartments. They have their own homes. A series of hearings will now be held in all five boroughs to allow tenants and landlords to testify. A final vote on rent increases will be held in June. New Yorkers are eligible for rent-regulated apartments if they make less than $200,000 a year. Today, a vote is scheduled on Capitol Hill to hold President Trump's attorney general in contempt of Congress. The vote comes after the Justice Department refused to provide the House Judiciary Committee with the full unredacted report from Robert Mueller. Democrats say Congress must see the full report and all underlying evidence. They've accused Attorney General Bill Barr of spinning Mueller's report in the president's favor. New York state legislators have struck a deal to allow cameras on school buses. The cameras will capture images of drivers who illegally pass them. Municipalities and school districts that opt in to the program will provide an annual report to law enforcement. The information will be used to track problematic intersections or bus stops. Governor Cuomo says he looks forward to New York becoming one of the first states to use this technology to protect school children. 638 today, the Royals will reveal to the world their new baby. Prince Harry and Meghan expected to pose with their newborn son, the couple breaking tradition to wait a full two days to introduce the baby. ABC's Julia McFarland, live in Windsor, England. Julia, hello, good morning. Morning, Ken, from AR. What can I say? A beautiful but a very rainy Windsor. Some new details in for you guys this morning. ABC News has learned that baby Sussex was born not here in Windsor, but in a private hospital in central London. Baby Sussex has had two nights at home with his mum and dad, and the world will soon get their first glimpse of the newest royal. Even before he was born, Baby Sussex was catching plenty of attention, just like his parents. I'm so incredibly proud of my wife, um, and as every father and parent would ever say, you know, your, your baby is absolutely amazing, but 
This little thing is, is, is absolutely to die for, so I'm just over the moon. Will and Kate, who he'll know as uncle and aunt, also giddy about finally meeting the new royal baby. I'm very pleased and glad to welcome my brother to the uh, Sleep Deprivation Society that is parenting. Grandpa Prince Charles on a trip to Berlin, looking forward to getting home and meeting his grandson. But Queen Elizabeth, the baby's great-grandma, is in town. The royal standard flying high above Windsor Castle. Meghan and Harry will soon reveal their new baby boy to the world for the first time. True. So we are just a few hours away from hopefully meeting the Sussex family for the first time now that they've had a chance to celebrate privately. It's probably not going to be a walkabout outside, but that's certainly not going to spoil uh, the excitement. Reporting live from Windsor, I'm Julia McFarlane for Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Ken? Julia, thank you so much for that report, and we'll be posting pictures of the new royal at ABC 7 NY. You'll also be able to find them in our free news app. So funny we were talking about a full two days before the baby's revealed. That's right. still pretty soon. I think I was two or three days old before I had a name, so, so there you go. You know, Welcome. <laughs> wait, have patience. I, I'm voting on James. I think it's going to be James. <laughs> we shall see. You are never more than seven minutes away from weather and traffic. Let's see how this weather's looking for us. Yeah, for us, yeah. Definitely a lot better than over the big pond there uh, with the rainfall over in England. Right now, in the tri-state area, we have some clouds, but that'll give way to sunshine. We'll get temperatures back up into the upper 60s. We had some rainfall down the Jersey Shore. That's exiting off to the east. Just one little sprinkle there over parts of Putnam County, northern parts of Westchester. That's moving off to the east as well. If you're headed off to the bus stop this morning, 57, your temperature at 8 a.m. We're up to 68 by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's clouds breaking for comfy afternoon sunshine air quality is going to be good uv index is an eight which is very high and pollen is on the high side it's oak birch and maple tree pollen really being the big problems for allergy sufferers rain chances over the next several days really not much of a rain chance tomorrow and then it increases on friday but it really spikes unfortunately on mother's day of course we uh, will detail that AccuWeather seven-day forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Right now, Heather O'Rourke has a look at the commute. And we've been discussing this accident, Queensboro Bridge, the Ed Koch 59th Street Bridge, Queensbound lower level ramp to Queens Plaza. You can see all of this police activity, a pedestrian was struck by a vehicle. Now let's move over here and talk to you about what's happening, trying to get to the Tappan Zee Bridge, Westchester County bound, a very serious accident. So you are bumper to bumper on the southbound side of the New York State Thruway. This delay begins right near the Garden State Parkway. It'll take you a half an hour to to get to the span. Our street cleaning rules are in effect. Ken and Shirley, over to you. All right, thank you very much, Heather. 641, kitchen danger. A woman on Staten Island severely injured when she says something in her kitchen exploded. Plus, call to serve. Details on the new proposal allowing felons to serve on jury duty when we come back. This eyewitness.